thanks for joining me folks. In the vice you see my rendition of a dragonfly nymph. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vice then is a Hanak H950 barbless hook. It's at size 8. It's an extra long shanked hook. It's a heavy wire black nickel hook. And on the hook you can see some dumbbell eyes. And what they are are these glass damsel twin eye beads um, from Vineyards. Uh, I've got two um, different flavours. Now what I suggest you do with these, once you've got them on the hook like this, if you do a couple of figure of eight wraps to hold them in place and then add a little bit of super glue, if you're doing two or three, get them all prepared and then what you'll end up with is this. So I've already um, done my super gluing on this one. I'm just going to make sure it's firmly locked in the vise. And as you can see, I've used some red thread. I'll just turn it to its side to, to figure a way and lock it into place. So, that done. A little bit of preparation work can save a little bit of time on the video. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas, it's the E04 and it's at 80 and as you can see it's a red thread and first thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of wax onto my thread just run my fingernail through it to take the excess off and I'm going to catch in just behind my eyes so the the dragonfly nymph is uh, a lot larger than the damsel nymph and that's why I'm using such a large hook for this fly. But I want it to have lots of movement so I'm going to incorporate a nice barbless tail. Now as with all my lures that I make with the longer tails, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just building a little rugby ball clump of thread at the back here and this does work it, it just stops that long marabou tail from winding round the uh, bend of the hook if, if you've been on a small still water there's nothing worse you're fishing a long tailed nymph and it comes back after spending a painfully slow figure of eight retrieve and the marabou tail has been wrapped around the bend very frustrating. So the tail I'm going to be using uh, is from Comp Candy and this one is the Marabou Olivesque and I've already got a feather here out the packet and what I want is to take about a thumb's worth of the Marabou and I'll just snip away my waist ends now and I want to capture this to the full length of the body. So up to just before the dumbbell eyes. So if I measure that up, I can come over in big wide turns to just hold it into place. And then I'll just come back, wrapping that down till I've reached the little bump that you see just there. Now, I'm going to leave the tail as is at the minute. It might seem a little bit long. But that can be shortened when you're actually on the water. So if you're, if you're fishing this sort of style fly and you're just getting tail nips, then sometimes to get, get a solid lock-up take, it's worth just pinching away the ends of your, your tail and that can often result in takes becoming fish to the bank. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle. What I've got here is just one strand from this hank. So I've taken, selected uh, one of the yellow strands from this hank of uh, sparkle and I just want to catch that in. Now what I want to do is a sparkle, I want it slightly longer than the tail. Now to measure that I'm going to wet my thumb and forefinger and just get my tail flattened out so I can see where I am with it. And if I catch that in on that side first with a couple of wraps then I can bend it round to be used again 
That wasn't very graceful, but it served a purpose. So I'll just bring that straight up the side and I'll lock that into place. Now, wet your thumb and forefinger, bring everything back and then you can cut your two flash bits away. So that's okay so far. Next I've got to tie in a wire rib. I'm going to be using the Danville's fine wire. It's a gold wire and I've already got a little piece locked off here. Now I want that to run this the length of the body as well. I'll just catch it in with some loose turns and then I'm going to come back to the base of the fly. Okay, the dubbing I'm going to be using is uh, from Nature Spirit. This is Emergence dubbing and it's it's Peacock Green and number 79 if you want to be specific. But uh, I've sometimes used just the tips off the marabou so I've I've made this fly much shorter and just used the tips to use as a body, which works just as well. Now, dub it in quite hard onto your thread. And uh, with any of these lures, what I'm looking to do is impart, impart as much movement as possible while I'm fishing them. So the marabou helps, but what else will help is the palmered body. That just adds some movement to the fly. Uh, and with the little glass eyes at the front, adding a slice, just need a little bit more dub in there. Underestimated that. I've been tying tiny dry flies actually for, for a river box, so uh, I seem to be underestimating my materials quite a bit actually at the minute. I'm sure uh, I'll get right back into it. So I've caught that in, and for the palmer in, I'm simply going to use this uh, old grizzle cape. Now I've already selected a feather from the cape. It's got quite uh, quite big fibres in it. It's not ideal, to be honest. What I would like to have used is like a hen hackle with uh, a lot softer feathers, because what that does is, is pulse in the water, where this is a, a bit more firmer. Just going to remove some of the little sides before I catch that in. Make sure it's locked into place. Now if you use your nail just to force that back slightly what it will do is it will bring it out at a 90 degree angle so when you start putting your turns in and I want to put two turns in on top here before I start palmering up the body it just helps with um, getting the whole palmer in line. Just makes a, a much neater job if you do that. So bring it all the way back, and then, oops, just caught the point of my hook there. But it's okay. It survived. And just as you get to the end, grab a hold of your your wire rib in your other hand. and then start to bring it round. Make sure you've got that caught in before you let go of your end. And once you've got it in, you don't need to be too too fussy with bringing the rib up. I mean, there's loads of palmer fibres here. If you catch a few in, there's no need to go crying onto your giant pillar that night. Um, there's still plenty more as to impart that movement that you're looking for from this fly. Um, last, in fact, maybe a few years back, and not so much a still water, but I was fishing on uh, the Avon, and I was making a film with Alan Ward, and uh, he shouted me over, and there was a, a dragonfly um, actually eating a mayfly. Uh, it was quite a quite a special moment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Alan didn't get the 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 act on film because it would have been an amazing uh, bit of footage but uh, they are ferocious predators dragonflies so I'm going to come in now just remove the waste of my palmer 
and then I can slick it all back like so. So that's looking pretty good so far. Now I'm going to add my thorax cover at this point and what I'm using is this Uni Mylar. It's a peacock orange so basically what that means is you get a twofer so on one side it's uh, it's orange and the other side it's a nice peacock colour. So I've got a piece already that I've been using uh, I'm going to capture that in just behind the eyes. Just get a couple of turns in and you can pull it through. Slick everything back, make sure you've got that trapped into place. Try and make sure any any of your palmer in that's coming forward, just try and get as much as you can back and get yourself some working space. And what do I mean by that? So just here between the eye and the palmer, I've now got approximately two millimeters, which is, is ideal. Now the next thing I'm going to do, and I don't do this often, but with this thread, there's no way around it really. I'm going to create a dubbing loop. And how I'm going to do that is run off some thread, lay it back on, get a cross into it, and just get a few thread wraps around your loop just to hold it into place. And I've just seen some of the hackle fibers sneaking forward there annoyingly, but I'll sort that out in a sec. So I just want to correct that. There we go. Now I know there's a couple sticking out the bottom there, but I can get rid of that later. So I've created a little dubbing loop here. And what I'm going to do next is add my dubbing twister which I have here. If you haven't got one of these, they're worth having. I don't use mine too often, if I'm honest, because generally, um, I uh, I just split the thread. I think it's a lot quicker than using a dubbing loop. So if I'm tying, tying a fly that requires it, I tend to just uh, split the thread and use that. And it, it's quicker and it works just as well. But on this occasion, I don't want to split the thread. So I've got some of the same hair I use for the body. Sorry, the same dubbing I use for the body. I'm going to slip that in there. Get it up as close to the head as you can. And then once you've got it in place, you can spin up your dubbing loop. Yeah. And there are times when... Uh, you just can't do without a dubbing loop really and on this occasion I think it just works quite well and it's also good to see a different way of doing things so bring it round and I want two turns in behind the eye and I've got the space for that because I made the space so that's really important that part you know you've got to make your space to work then the next time it comes over you come across the front and then you can bring your thread over the front and lock in with a few turns that dubbing loop and we can snip away our waste so that's looking fabulous now again it all adds to the uh, the look of the fly and I think I'm liking the lilac eyes better than the uh, the other one. So next, we're going to bring our thorax cover over the top. And that just hides uh, where you've transitioned your thread over. And just lock that into place. Two or three turns. I'm going to have quite a big head on this fly. So bring it back. and then you can snip away your waist. Okay, it's looking okay. I'm going to now concentrate on building up a fairly decent head. And I like red 
Um, I just think it's another trigger point on the fly. And it works quite well. So I'm ready to finish off. I'll come in with my whip finish tool. Just make sure that's buried into place. Now while you're doing this, you can't stop, keep whipping this back. It's just going to help you when you come to finish off with your varnish. I'm just going to snip away some little fibres that I've got into, into the way there. And then I'm going to use some UV resin. You can use um, head cement with this or varnish, but you do need to uh, allow time for it to dry. Now I'm just putting a coat over the top of the thorax cover and I'm just going to open up my vise so I can put some around the head. Now I'll probably give this another coat after I'm done but for all intents and purposes that's the finished fly. Much bigger than a damsel nymph. Uh, they're huge beasties, look out for them on the still waters. And uh, they'll often um, catch insects in flight. Uh, they're amazing creatures. Uh, and trying to get a photograph of them is uh, nigh on impossible. And there we go. Dragonfly Nymph. I hope you got some uh, tips out of that. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider clicking on the button. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time.